So, you know, until you've had a, some experience with the current distribution set, you know, uh, maybe the top five, you know, you've tried all five of them and you see how they all react differently, what they do well, what they don't do, um, you start to get an idea about maybe what 90% of the Linux users are encountering and I have yet to see one distribution in the current ecosystem give to me everything that I want. Um, I, I'm not just a crybaby about KDE, I, I really do like the old KDE better. Although, you know, now, now that I figure out how to put icons on my desktop, that's good, but the bad thing is is that it's got to land in that little menu bar for me to get it there. If it doesn't land there, I don't know how to get an icon on my desktop. You see? <laughs> so if the deb isn't made very well, I'm, I'm going to be running GUI programs from the terminal. You know, come on, call... At least I used to be able to... I used to be able to make icons that would launch scripts. I probably can't do that now. The only way I can get an icon on the desktop is by selecting it from that menu bar, right-clicking it, and saying put it on the desktop. Well, that doesn't really provide, still doesn't really provide a complete solution. Um, you know, I can come up with all sorts of things that are really little things that go wrong here and there, and then after a while they add up and you start to come to the realization that it looks good at first, but, you know, it just doesn't give me all the options to do everything that I want to do and it just doesn't work right in some cases and a lot of people don't understand permissions and so they're surprised when they go into my computer and they click on it and SUSE is the only one I've seen it in you go you go into my computer you click on one of the hard disk icons and <clears throat> it doesn't even respond okay I know that's supposed to respond so people are wondering well how do I get to my other hard disks they might even come to the conclusion that you can't but you can. Um, and they may, after a while, figure out if they uh, click on their Dolphin icon, they go to the left and they try to click on their 18 gigabyte hard drive, uh, there'll be an error. It says an error has occurred accessing the hard drive. The system responded on free de desktop HAL device permission uh, denied by policy. <clears throat> well, why is that? I can do that in Windows or something else that doesn't work. And they go into Kmail and they find. They try to run an email and it just freezes up on them. And then they go into open office and they find they open up a document that's emailed to them, has graphics in it, and it, it looks garbled. Or just a little bit formatted, just a little bit oddly. They try to convert that access database and it won't convert because Open Office has an SQL backend. They don't they're not using the same mechanisms as access. They try to build a database and it's not intuitive like it is even in, in in uh, Office 2000, so you know, then after a while they just think, okay, well the the way Linux is now, you have to really want to use it, <coughs> and you get at the end of the day, you have to, you know, after so much time, you really have to have a an underlying desire to keep using it because there are things that are missing from a lot of different parts, and the current model is not working. Um, we have to accept that and realize it that the way the current political environment, the current workforce that we have, um, uh, that the end result of the programs that we have will be what they are. Okay, <laughs> this is the limit that we're that we're at. I've seen this this limit in place for the past six years. I've seen distributions come and go. And they all seem to come and go not having made money. I mean, they can't... No one could really afford to to bleed $20 million a year so that software will be on the desk for the public use. Um, that's you know unless unless they could bury it and they could offset it with their 
<laughs> sales of netware <laughs> on the other side, which is what Novell's doing. But certainly not an individual. And no one's going to be able to form a corporation and say that the foundation of my, my corporation is going to be that. And if you think that a one-man shop is going to be able to keep a Linux distribution up to date, there, there's far too many things that they have to do because there's so much chaos in the underlying system. What, chaos, what do I mean by the chaos? I mean exactly um, changing the way the bootloader works. I mean the way that X works in one version of the distribution and not on the other, not on the next uh, version of the distribution, etc., etc., etc. So, what needs to happen is that we need to um, somehow find a way to get some more effort back. You know, Windows is able to use open source software as a supplement for its for its users to make the, the, the environment better for it. And, and the same thing should be for Linux. It should be able to have proprietary software and drivers supplement the effort that's there to make a complete system. If we, if we reject it too much, then it's not going to work.